Hi, Mary and Bimford families. This is Principal Martinez. I just want to welcome everybody to this Mary and Bimford reentry meeting video. Um, I'm excited to see our students, and I have a lot of information to share today um, in regards to what is it going to look like the last 36, 37 days of school. Um, again, we're excited. Uh, when I heard the PED announced that 100% of our students were going to be able to come back to school and in-person learning, um, we got super excited. We've been prepared for a while. Um, we've actually been planning for this for a very long time. So um, hopefully after today, I would have been able to answer um, several of your questions and you'll have a, a better feeling um, of knowing of what is it going to look like for in-person learning. And if I don't answer all of your questions, then you're more than welcome to email me. You can email your teachers with those questions and we will get back to you um, with some answers as soon as we can. So let's go ahead and start the meeting. All right. Okay, so on Monday, April the 5th, 100% of our students who have opted in for in-person learning will be returning to the building. Now, I know that we sent out a survey and we asked you, do you wanna do remote? Are you gonna be in-person? And you might've selected remote and that is okay. Um, it might take a week or two for you to change your mind uh, just to be able to see how things are going, kind of get a lay of the land, um, just making sure everything is running smoothly and, and that's okay. So if you wanna change your mind and you wanna um, not do remote anymore and you wanna start sending your students to in-person learning, you are more than welcome to do that. Just make sure that you uh, let your teacher know and then uh, your teacher will let us know and we'll make sure that we have the supplies and uh, breakfast and lunch will be ready and prepared and it'll be a go as soon as we have that start date for you. School supply lists. So right now we have um, a limited uh, amount of supplies on campus. Um, we, we would greatly appreciate all of your support. Um, grade levels have created their own supply lists. And so really it just uh, a max of, of about five um, items just to kind of get us through the last 37 days of school would be fantastic. Um, it's not going to be the supply list that you're used to seeing at the beginning of the school year. Um, it's really, again, just to get us through the next 37 days of school. Technology devices. So pre-K, kindergarten, first grade, and second grade have been operating with iPads. And our third, fourth, and fifth graders have been operating with the Chromebooks. Um, so that is going to remain. Uh, that is going to kind of stay a constant from here on out. I think the district has done a really good job with going to a one-to-one -one device. And so what that means for our students is now um, until the end of the school year, um, they're going to be tasked to bring a fully charged iPad or a fully charged uh, Chromebook with them to school each day. And then they're also going to be taking that home with them because they might have some, some homework or a project or something that needs to be completed on those iPads or those Chromebooks in the evening. And again, they're just going to, the next day they come back with a fully charged iPad or Chromebook and, and we'll just continue on with our learning. Water bottles, okay, this is big, this is new. So we no longer have drinking fountains. They have all been converted to what we call water filling stations. Um, it's just a great way for students uh, who are you know, tasked to bring water bottles to school each day, each day because um, gone are the days of students sharing the water fountain. Uh, we have to make sure that those, were, um, those are closed and um, students don't have access to those anymore. But again, um, each of those stations now are water filling stations. And um, if they get thirsty in the morning, during lunch, um, outside at recess, they have an opportunity to refill their bottles and, and ensure that they're hydrated for the rest of the day. So don't forget your water bottle students. Transportation, so let's talk buses. Uh, so you're gonna have access to these slides. Um, you can go to mybusstop.aps.edu. There's gonna be some information if you haven't already gotten um, information from your teacher as to where's my bus stop, um, what's the bus number. I think right now our buses are gonna be color coded. So you might have a blue bus or a green bus, or there might be like a, a yellow card or orange card on the bus that would signify that is your bus. I don't know if they're going by number anymore, 
Um, again, they're going to go by your street address. So again, just take a look at uh, what street addresses are nearest you, and that would be the bus that you send your students on each day. I just want to give you a heads up that service could be interrupted because we may not have a bus driver ready to go that day because they might be sick. Um, there might have been a positive case. There's also going to be two students per seat. And in the event of a positive case, all riders, all students, because there might be a mix of students from different classes, would be quarantined. Um, so I wanted to share that information with you. So it's just a little bit of an increased risk for a positive case. Again, APS is going to do a great job of ensuring that our bus drivers are uh, making sure that there's two students to a bus, that they're getting the hand sanitizer before they get on the bus. Um, bus drivers are tasked to clean the seats after each uh, pickup and drop off. So all of that will happen. Um, but we just wanted to make sure that we relayed that information to you. And windows will be open and now and you know, maybe for the next month, dependent on the weather, it could be cold in the morning. So just make sure that your students are dressing in layers. All right, food service. Okay, so all students here at Marian Bimford are going to be provided a free breakfast after the bell and lunch. Um, we are going to do the best that we can to ensure that students are eating outside. I've already um, worked out the logistics with our head custodian, Tobias, and he already, we already know how many um, tables will be set up outside. Other classes will have an opportunity to almost to, to do somewhat of like a picnic style lunch on our grass field. We have a huge grass field, so that's pretty awesome for us. And, um, and then we also have grab and go for our remote students. So if you are going to stay remote, you still have access to breakfast and lunch. It's Wednesdays from 11 to 1 p.m. at the Food and Nutrition Services, or you can go to the West Mesa Aquatic Center. Okay, now that we are starting on Monday, April the 5th, um, we have created a community commitment pledge. It's for our caregivers, our parents, our guardians, it's for our students and for our staff. And really what we wanna do is that we want to be able to play our part and we all want to commit to making sure that we stay as safe as we can um, with students on campus and ensuring that um, they're able to learn in a safe environment, that we're social distancing, that we're wearing our masks, that we're washing our hands. Um, and it's going to take all of us to be able to do that. And so here in front of you is just stating that, you know, we're, we're going to do the best that we can. We're going to wear the appropriate face masks. Um, you know, for sick, uh, you know, we're asking you all to ensure that students stay home. Um, if they're presenting any symptoms, they could be um, COVID symptoms. And, you know, just to really uh, ask yourself those questions in the morning, make sure that you're asking your students those questions in the morning, checking temperatures if needed um, before sending them to school, because that will really um, decrease an event happening of um, us possibly having to shut down school and going back to remote because there might have been a positive case on campus. So this is the community commitment pledge, and we hope that you read it all and you take it into high consideration because uh, that is exactly what we're going to do on a daily basis is that we're fully committed, but we're going to be safe at the same time. And we're also going to have what's called a re-entry pledge. And we're going to send this home. Teachers will send this home next week. Uh, in the blue is the parent pledge, you know, monitoring our child's progress and communicating regu regularly with the child's teacher, making sure that your child is at school on time each day, uh, making sure that your child wears a mask each day, uh, pre-checking every morning for symptoms, fever, illness, um, being at school on time and picking up your child um, from school on time and then assisting with homework. Uh, you know, homework isn't, um, homework is, could be a policy in, in different classes within different grade levels. So you might see some homework coming for your first grader and you may not see some homework coming home for your fourth grader and that's okay. Um, 
Homework is a way to continue to practice some of the skills and concepts that students have learned. And if you do have homework, we would really appreciate that you work hard with your students to ensure that they get, they get that practice in each night. And then we have a student pledge and the student pledge is stating that the students are um, going to bring their iPad and their Chromebook fully charged. They're going to come ready to learn. They're going to wear their mask. They're going to try their best to social distance to the best of their ability. And they're going to take responsibility for completing that uh, classwork and staying on task and listening to directions and um, asking the teacher, asking a, an adult on campus, asking family for help if needed, if they ever have any type of trouble with work um, at home. And then we also have a teacher pledge. And this is um, just consistent with our community pledge. We all play a, a role and our teachers are gonna do the best that they can to communicate on a regular daily basis with families as to what are the skills and concepts that are being taught on a daily basis? What are the expectations? Um, encouraging daily attendance, regular attendance, that's meaningful. It plays a huge role in the learning of our students using a variety of strategies because we all have different learners and, and different levels. And so we all need to be able to, to learn with um, different strategies to help us be successful. And you're gonna see that homework can support lessons being taught in class. So um, you'll see some of that being sent home on a daily basis and uh, teaching students how to become good citizens. Um, we're gonna be having um, Officer Ackerson, she's working with our first graders right now. We have a very good relationship with APD. And so you um, may see her um, police vehicle on campus. Um, she has an office in the front office right here. We're super excited that um, on a daily basis she can pop in and she has a place to be and and she, you, she's gonna be visual, um, somebody that the kids are gonna be able to get to know um, and just you know grow a good relationship with. And last, we encourage families to take an active role in their child's education. And that's always going to come from the teacher. And just, again, that's going to come with the communication part. All right, so let's talk contact tracing. So what happens if there is um, a positive case on campus? So if a student tests positive, in surveillance testing, um, and that's going to be you know something that comes about because uh, we are asking all families that if somebody, if you come in contact with somebody who is positive or you have been tested within the family and somebody has tested positive that you relay that information to the teacher. You can relay that information to our school nurse as well um, because that's gonna help us do some contact tracing on campus if your kiddo um, was here that day. Uh, what would happen is classes would move online depending on what part of the what part of the campus that your student was because they're not only going to be in their class they're going to be transitioning to pe or to library or to art um, or to their bilingual class and so we have to make sure that um, we know who else may have been in contact and then students uh, within the class or classes because it could be multiple classes will be asked to quarantine for 10 days. That is the new guidance that has come from CDC. It went down from 14 to 10 days. And then after that, um, we will make sure that we uh, tell teachers and students that it's okay to come back to school to in for in-person learning and classes will resume after those 10 days. Um, while classes are learning remotely, as is the teacher, the classrooms will get a deep clean um, and just on a daily basis, school-wide, classes are going to be cleaned daily in addition to the cleaning of bathrooms daily and high-touch areas. So next, student commitment to in-person versus remote learning. Um, this is a big question. Um, we are asking for parents and caregivers to commit to either in-person or remote for five days each week. We want to make sure that we remain consistent. Okay, consistency is key. Um, it's it's what's going to increase the confidence of the students. It's going to ensure that they know uh, what their daily schedule is. It's not going to be, um, you know, coming to school one day and then learning from home remote the next day. So again. Um, if you choose in person, it is for five days each week. If you choose remote, that is to remain five days each week. 
Again, here is a graphic just to suggest uh, exactly what I um, just said was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Students will either be learning in person in school or learning remote. Um, all of my staff will be teaching in person five days a week. Okay, so what's going to be happening at the beginning of the day and the end of day? So students must be dropped off at the designated parent drop off and pickup area between 723 and 743 each day. This is big. So what I want to relate to families is, is that um, staff reports to campus at 720 each day. That's the start of um, the duty day for our staff. Um, we like to give them about a three minute cushion to get out to the duty, uh, to their, to their duty stations. Um, so that way we can, uh, make sure that, uh, students are safe being dropped off at the parent pickup or they're being safe, uh, being dropped off at the bus drop off. Um, so duty personnel, when they're out there, they're going to welcome each vehicle. So we, we do have a specific area, um, where we want students to be able to get out of their car. I do want you to know that um, parking on the other side of the street and having your student cross the street with you and get in you getting out of that car, um, that is not allowed district-wide, um, especially now during the pandemic. Um, it's district policy that all um, families, all caregivers uh, stay in their car and that you ride through the parent um, drop off and pick up for safety reasons. Um, again, duty personnel, when students are dropped off or they get off the bus, they're going to be directed into the building front door only. We're going to have our front doors open um, until eight o'clock. And, uh, and then students will be ushered out to the playground for that morning, um, kind of like a morning recess before the, before the bell rings. Uh, first bell, is at 7.43, the tardy bell is at 7.48, and classes are gonna begin pr promptly at 7.50. Breakfast will be served as early as 7.50. We wanna make sure that all students have an opportunity, whether they've already eaten at home or not, that they have an opportunity to eat um, in the class, which is um, definitely gonna stimulate their brain and give them some energy and get them ready for learning. Um, and students must be picked up on time each day. Again, the end of the duty day for our staff is 2.20. Um, so from two to 2.20, that is the time that we use at the end of the, the day for students to get on the bus. And then now they're on their way home from the bus. And then for the parent um, pickup area to kind of be able to go through and all students be able to get into their vehicles and home safely. Um, we usually have meetings uh, after school at 720. And so again, picking up students, um, picking them up on time each day is not only going to help with the safety um, and the risk of students, but to also allow our staff to be able to get to meetings on time as well. And each teacher is going to be responsible for their own students. So um, teachers are going to be tasked to, at the end of the day, uh, they're going to walk all of their bus students to the bus, drop them off there. We'll have some duty personnel outside at the buses being able to monitor um, them there. Once they drop the students off at the bus, are any, any students who walk will also be directed to our cross guards. And then teachers will proceed to the parent drop off and pick up, line up students, social distance, um, and, and then we'll get them in the vehicles and on their way at the end of the day. And here is a graphic. This is a graphic of uh, the parent drop off and pickup, and this is a familiar sight. We took an aerial view of our uh, of our front parking lot. You see these red arrows are coming in through that gate. Uh, the green areas, the, the green arrows are where we uh, would like for you to drop off students or pick up students, um, and then the blue arrows are directing you north on Cody Drive. Okay, we have a we have an X there with the stop sign stating, please don't turn this way. And it's only uh, to, to prevent bottleneck necking and um, more traffic on the street. Um, it could be a little bit of an inconvenience. I, we totally understand, but um, the, the signage is stating uh, based off of uh, what the district has provided for Mary Ann Bimford that uh, if you're in those blue arrows, you must go north on Coris. 
All right. And here is another graphic of um, what it would look like for after school pickup. And we're going to have um, pre K and kinder lining up. You see these uh, boxes on the graphic first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Um, we definitely want to try to make sure that this is a smooth and easy process for everyone involved. And we'd like to get the traffic flow, um, you know, keep it going, keep it moving so that there's not a whole lot of bottlenecking going on on the street. So again, it says no left turns. That would definitely help out with the traffic um, and just, you know, making sure that all of our students are safe the entire time as we're waiting for, for you to pull through at the parent pickup and drop off. And again, don't forget, parents, you must remain in your vehicle. Please do not try to park or get out of your vehicle and come, um, come to the building to pick up your student. Um, it's district policy. It's due to the safety of the COVID safety protocols that have been put in place. And again, we just want to ensure that everybody stays safe. So please, please, please stay in your vehicle um, and just, you know, take turns going through the parent drop off and pick up and you'll, we'll try to get you in and out as quick as we can. All right, classroom protocols, entry and exit. So beginning at 743, again, that's the first bell, teachers are gonna pick up the students on the playground. Uh, on Monday, students will know where their, um, their station is for pickup. Uh, they're gonna line up outside, they're gonna social distance in an orderly fashion. And at that time, teachers can either decide to give them hand sanitizer before walking into the building, or they can wait until they get into the classroom. At the end of class, teachers and students are going to make sure that they sanitize desks, um, any other materials that they might have touched in the class before they leave the building. And again, always socially distancing. Um, I say no lingering because as soon as that bell rings, we're getting everybody out of that building wherever they need to be. Either they're going to be walking home, students are going to be getting on the bus, or they're going to be at the parent drop off and pick up. Um, Teachers uh, will have students sign out for bathroom in pairs. Again, bathrooms, um, bathroom usage um, is uh, a bit limited. And so we wanna make sure that students are, we're gonna promote that when students go to recess, that that's a great opportunity to use the restroom. Again, at lunch in the cafeteria or when they're outside, they can use the outdoor restrooms at that time as well. Um, but during class, teachers will have a sign in and a sign out just to ensure who's in the hallways. Again, that helps with contact tracing. And again, we want to limit the amount of students who are um, walking uh, through the halls. And let's see, teachers may opt to have class outside each day. That is, um, that's something that we're promoting. Um, as long as they have Wi-Fi access and they're able to be able to teach their in-person students and their remote students at the same time, I think that would be a great idea. Um, but students will continue to social distance while outside and they are going to have to wear their mask even when outside. Social distancing. So that has changed. So the CDC came out with new requirements that um, that it went from six feet uh, minimum to now three feet. Uh, we're going to do the best that we can. If we if we can keep it six feet, why not? Um, but three feet is the minimum, um, and we're going to do it to the greatest extent possible. That's our new phrase for the, the remainder of the 37 days to the greatest extent possible. Um, so again. Uh, in the classroom, in the hallways, outside at recess, um, while we're eating, just uh, making sure that we're staying our distance and we're wearing our masks. And that will definitely help with the safety of our students on campus each day. And we're also going to have a lot of signage on campus. You're going to see something like right here. It says, please practice social distancing just so that it could um, be a re daily reminder for students. We have them on the floors, on the walls. Um, and then we also have some stickers on the floors that say six feet social distancing. Again, um, this is how we prepared for um, a possible hybrid return. Um, and this was before the CDC came out with the three feet. So again, we're just going to stick with, with six feet and we're going to do the best that we can. And uh, uh, just wanting to show you what campus and, and building foot traffic flows look like. So what's going to happen if there is severe weather? Crazy New Mexico weather happens. And we just had a snowstorm the other day and we're now, and that was just March. So who knows what April and May can bring. Um, 
if there is ever severe weather, a uh, snow day, what's going to happen is everybody's just going to go to remote learning for that day. So it's not going to be a snow day anymore. I think gone are the days of snow days, um, which I think is a good thing because then there's not any loss of learning. And then we can and we can continue with our lessons and our unit plans and all of that other good stuff. All right, so let's talk health and safety and community expectations. So first off, right off the bat, we're all going to adhere to following federal, state, and local orders. Anything that's included um, by the CDC, anything regarding social distancing and all of the safety measures that we need to take on a daily basis, we will follow those. Um, COVID-19 testing and notification, again, if you, um, if your student or someone in your household tests positive for COVID-19, please make sure that you notify the teacher, notify our school nurse. That way we can do our own contact tracing and make, making sure that our staff and students are, stay, are safe. Please stay home if you are sick. Um, if your student is sick, um, expect to keep them home. Um, if, if, you, if, if, you're, if you question, maybe it's allergies, maybe it's something else, um, again, um, make try to make the best call that you can um, because we will have thermometers on campus each teacher has a cleaning kit and it came with a thermometer so if students are presenting sub symptoms teachers are going to be tasked um, along with our nurse and our nurse's assistant to check temperatures and check for other symptoms um, that uh, would suggest you know maybe we have to send this particular student home to make sure that they're safe and the rest of the students are safe um, Let's see. Temperature checks. I just mentioned that we will uh, be checking temps on a daily basis. Again, 100.3 Fahrenheit is the temperature. If there's anything higher than that, um, your student will be sent home. Um, again, that's going to be with the advisement of our school nurse or our nurse's assistant. Um, personal protective equipment. Students and employees will be wearing their face mask coverings throughout the day. Um, hygiene, we're asking you that you just uh, help us with the pra these practices at home. Um, again, the frequent hand washing, that's super important. Teaching your student how to wash their hands and maybe they're singing happy birthday or they're counting to 20. Um, that definitely helps with the cleanliness and limiting students' personal items is definitely gonna help as well. Again, we cannot share um, supplies in class. Um, each student is gonna have their own set of supplies. They're gonna have their own headphones. They're gonna have their own iPad or their own Chromebook. And so, um, and, and if you're gonna bring, if your student's gonna bring lunch, make sure that they're only eating their lunch and because we know students like to share. And I think that's great and fantastic because you know they're practicing what it looks like to be kind and generous. And, uh, but for now, uh, during this pandemic, we're asking that, you know, we're, we're not asking students to share. We kind of have to keep our things to ourselves and to also limit, um, so no toys to be brought on campus, um, any kind of uh, extracurricular sports equipment, um, footballs and soccer balls and basketballs and things like that, that normally they would play with other students on the playground, that is prohibited. And then cell phones. Um, cell phones can be brought onto campus, however, they need to be turned off and they have to remain in backpacks and uh, until the end of the day. Okay, so they, they are allowed, but they have to stay in the backpack and they must be um, set to off. All right, again, we're going to wear our masks at all times. We will be using a ton of hand sanitizer. Uh, students are going to get it when they first um, enter their classroom here at school and throughout the day. Um, I think that's just a great practice, a great safety practice. Um, hygiene teach your students because we're teaching them here at school to cough or sneeze into their elbow or a tissue, try not to touch their face, try not to touch the mask, um, social distancing from other people, don't uh, try not to move desks around um, because teachers have done a really good job in class to, to social distance their, their classroom in, in a way where they actually even have um, tape on the floor, which is fantastic. So it's a guide for, for students to, to understand and to know that, hey, my desk actually needs to stay within these, these lines here that the teacher has laid down on the carpet for us. Um, eating, hand sanitizer or washing our hands before and after eating and cleaning again, wiping down desks, chairs, other surfaces is touched um, with a special product that was provided by the district. It's safe. 
Um, it smells good and it's definitely going to help sanitize the class at the uh, all day um, for students. Okay, so which masks are allowed? So on the left here of the screen, these are the masks that are allowed. These are masks that cover your nose, they cover the mouth, they fit snugly over the face. Um, off to the right, you're gonna see some masks like bandanas and masks with valves and neck gaiters and single layer cloth masks. Um, those are not allowed on campus. Um, and then I've also been asked if we can just wear a face shield. So you could wear a face shield. You could send your student with a face shield. However, they must wear a mask as well. Okay, and so high touch surfaces are going to be cleaned on a daily basis by our, by our custodians. Um, there's a, a set of protocols that our custodial staff will be following. So, you know, door handles, restrooms, um, water fountains, or water filling stations, outside playground equipment, all of those are considered high touch services and they will be cleaned on a daily basis. And APS will be providing masks for employees. And we also have extra masks for students who may have um, forgotten one at the beginning of the day, or maybe during lunch it got blown away um, because a gust of wind came. And we all know what, what, what kind of weather we have with the wind in Albuquerque. And so that could happen. So we do have extras on hand for your students. Um, but you know, just to help us promote with your, with your kiddos, and I'm pretty sure they're really good at wearing their face mask right now, is just to bring their face mask and, and to let them know that they're gonna be asked to wear it all day, um, except when they're eating or drinking. So mask do's and don'ts. All right, so do choose masks that they have two or more layers of washable, breathable fabric, completely cover your nose and mouth. They fit snugly against the sides of your face and don't have gaps and have a nose wire to prevent air from leaking out of the top of the mask. Those are fantastic masks. Now, do not choose masks that are made of fabric that is hard to breathe, for example, vinyl or leather. Um, do not choose masks that have that exhalation valve bent, which allows virus particles to escape or are intended for healthcare workers like those N95 um, respirators. Because I, I think, uh, you know, when the pandemic first hit, I think we were at a, in a shortage with those. So it would definitely help that um, if those were available, those would be made more available to our frontline workers. All right, so what does it look like for sign in and sign out? So all gates are going to be open during arrival and departure times, um, but the front entry doors, they will be open at 720. Again, students are gonna be coming from walking from home or the bus or parent drop off and pick up, um, but doors will be locked at eight o'clock. Um, this is to ensure safety and, and, and to, to just make sure that everybody is safe on campus. Um, if students are tardy, and we totally understand that your student may be tardy, um, you have to call up front, uh, call the office from your vehicle, and somebody will come outside. And, and, and as soon as you see them come outside, out the door, then you can release your student to them and they will get them settled into class. Um, so, during the pandemic, this is a district-wide policy. Um, visitors, volunteers, parents, guardians are no longer allowed on campus, which it's tough for a lot of schools. It's gonna to be tough for us because we are gonna miss seeing you on campus as well. Um, but this is district policy. So just know that again, um, you're gonna stay in your vehicle um, drop your student off. Students are coming from the bus or walking from home. And I know that you might want to come into the building, but again, um, families, caregivers are, are not allowed on campus right now. Um, if that changes, we will definitely let you know because you never know with the CDC guidelines or um, you know what the PED may come out with within the next 37 days. So if it changes, we will definitely let you know. Um, and if you would like to sign out your student early, because this may happen, they might have a doctor's appointment, they might need to go see the dentist, we totally understand. Uh, make sure to call the office again from your car and we will bring your student to the office and we'll walk them out to your vehicle and you can be on your way. 
All right, so what are some of the infrastructure improvements that have gone on here at Mary M. Bimford? So 100% of the HVAC and MERV air filters on campus have passed our fire marshal inspection. That is a great thing. I think we've had, uh, we've had brand new air filters installed. Um, so what does that mean for Mary M. Bimford? That means that uh, the airflow is popping. It's really nice. Um, in fact, it's so nice that uh, we've had to have our air conditioners, um, our air conditioning units on as well. That helps with the air filtration and the pumping in and out of air uh, to the classrooms. So um, it may be cold. And right now I'm gonna be honest, it is pretty cold on campus right now. So please make sure that your student comes to school on Monday dressed in layers. They have a coat with them as well. Um, that's gonna help them with the learning and being able to pay attention and focus um, because it could be a little bit cold in the class. Doors and windows will rem remain open at all times. Um, again, to help with the airflow and bottle filling stations. Like I mentioned earlier, they have been installed. Happy about that. All right. Again, if, uh, if it's too cold for your kiddo and they might have forgotten, forgotten a jacket, um, we do have some reserves in our parent room. So we, uh, some students might have an opportunity to, to have a jacket to wear um, if they do get cold. Um, if we don't, if we run out, uh, we'll just call families and, and hope that you're able to drop one off for your student for the remainder of the day. Okay, breakfast and lunch. Students will eat outside on tables or on the grass field. Breakfast is going to be delivered to the classrooms. So what's gonna happen is the teachers will pass out the breakfast, teachers will collect the trash and place the trash bag outside the door. And our school custodian will pick up the trash and will dispose of it promptly. Um, students again will be using hand sanitizer before leaving the classroom for lunch. And students are going to have 15 minutes to eat um, their lunch. And then they're also gonna have 15 minutes for lunch recess. Okay, Care Bear Room. Um, I spoke about this a little earlier about possibly having a positive case on campus or just students who may be exhibiting COVID symptoms. Um, again, our nurse will be um, taking temperatures and assessing students on a daily basis. Um, she's a, our, our nurse and our nurse's assistant are well-trained um, and they know exactly what they're doing. And so what will happen is if a student is presenting symptoms, the nurse or nurse's assistant will be called to a classroom. Um, again, they'll be assessed right outside the classroom. And if the school nurse or nurse's assistant feels like they are presenting, your student may be presenting COVID symptoms, um, we will contact you immediately and we'll ask you to come pick up your child as soon as possible. So as we are waiting for you to come pick them up, um, students are gonna be in what's called a Care Bear room. It's one of our portables that we have outside um, and everything inside is specific for um, the ultimate care and safety of your student. Um, there's a place to lay down, there's a place to sit down. We have running water. Um, we have actually bottles of water as well. We have, uh, again, running water, sink to wash hands. We got plenty of hand sanitizer and we will have a supervising adult in that room um, caring for your student until you come to pick them up. Again, if you do, if you are called, please come as soon as possible. Um, all you have to do is drive up to the front, call the front office. Uh, the front office will um, will call on the school nurse, uh, and your student will be walked from the care bear room to your vehicle at that time. And last but not least, we want you to know that APS is back, hashtag APS is back. And we want you to stay in touch with all things um, that are going on on campus at Mary M. Bimford. And so we're gonna try to provide as many updates as we can on our Twitter handle and at our school webpage. Um, right here, you can see in front of you, that's our Twitter handle. So if you haven't followed us, please follow us. And um, if you haven't taken a look at our school webpage, school webpage, please do so as well. Plenty of information on both sites as to what's going on 
um, at Mary M. Bimford because hashtag APS is back and we're excited. And I can't wait to be um, uploading new videos and photos of all of our kiddos. And, and just, uh, just a heads up on that is uh, when we come back to class, teachers are gonna be asked uh, to, to give uh, out a permission slip for students, uh, for families to sign so that students' um, pictures can be taken and they can be posted. You can opt into that or you can opt out. And so we just definitely need to know what students have opted in, which students have opted out, and we'll go from there. But we're super excited and um, you know we're looking forward to seeing everybody. And one last item that I forgot, we have a re-entry website that's dedicated to all of our families. All of this information that I went over is on our re-entry website um, that we're also gonna, uh, this will be located on our school website, okay? So it's gonna be a link on our school website. You can click on that. And if there's anything that you forgot or you kind of wanted to read through again, um, you're more than welcome to do that. And uh, again, if you have any questions, that I may not have answered today, you are more than welcome to email me. Um, you can email my assistant principal, uh, that's Carmen Trujillo, and, uh, or you can uh, email these questions or text these questions to your teacher and we'll definitely get back to you with some answers. Um, again, I'm looking forward to seeing all of my students. We're super excited. We have, uh, we're, we're excited. We've, there's a surprise for students when they get here on Monday. Um, so you guys have a good restful three-day weekend, and we will see all of you on Monday, April the 5th. See ya.